Right, so let me get this slideshow cranking. Okay, so what is the rule of three? I've got this kind of like um, theory of things where most people can generally work on three things at a time or keep three things in their mind and juggle three things and do them pretty well. As soon as you go over three, it drops really quick. There's a book by, um, I think it's Leo Baptista, and he talks about, when you focus on one thing, you can do that 80% well. Up to three things, you can do them probably like 30%-ish well across the three because you're spreading your focus. And anything over three, it just drops down below that. So I like the rule of three as a general idea is like, you always want to have one thing you're focusing on mainly, but then two other things that are like there in um, just sitting there, getting the work done in a very like do this kind of process, very simple process that you can keep going. And I like, I put these in the categories and I was thinking about this the other day and I want to do a video on it for you guys. Cause we're basically going to be talking about what we do in the gym based on this rule of three. So let's have a look at what it is. So this is a Venn diagram and you are in the middle and then we've got one, two, three. And you can see that there's cross sections here. If you can figure out like which way we're going to show you how, when you can figure out these cross sections and live in there, you're basically hacking the system and doing it in a much simpler way. So if you can live here and then do number three, that's you're only doing two things. So it gives you room to do other stuff. And that's what we're trying to do at Reform. We're trying to let out, show you how to hack the system so you can do things much easier. So we're taking care of stuff for you. So we take care of these hack areas, I like to call them. All right, so methods are many, but principles are few. Methods always change, but principles never do. So there's plenty of stuff we can do in the gym. There's so many things we can do in the gym, in nutrition, in re-energizing, outside of work, inside work, whatever. There's so much stuff we can do, but the principles always matter. And I'm going to show you the principles that we live by at Reform. So we have you in the middle for life, the three rules for life. I like to think of three buckets, family and friends. So these are like close family members. Like if something really bad goes, happens, who like that happens, who do you call? And close friends, if something really bad happens, who do you call? They're the ones you keep close to you and the ones you touch base with all the time. Fitness. Fitness is the other thing in the, in the, everyone's life. You need to have some level of fitness. Everyone's got some level of fitness, whether it be good or bad. You just need to have some level of fitness. You need to be working on it in some way so you can live a long, healthy life. And freedom. We all want some kind of freedom. And freedom is just the ability to choose to do the things that you want to do. And having family and friends, having fitness allows you to have that freedom as well. So freedom is things like work, um, passive income, owning houses, all that kind of stuff. The freedom to do the things that you want to do. That's why I like falling them in these, put them in these buckets. But today we're going to talk about fitness and in regards to you or being part of reform. So we live off the move, eat, re-energize philosophy. So number one, we want you to move and move as much as you can in a reasonable way that doesn't cause any added stress. If it causes you more stress to get more moving in, then it's not right for you. You need to move as much as you can fit in that allows you to live a happy life. So it doesn't feel stressful trying to do it. Eat. Once you get your movement in place, you eat to match your movement. When you say, I need to train more to lose weight, wrong. You need to move as much as you can get in, which is a reasonable dose that you can do long-term. And then you eat to match the movement for long-term leanness. That's, that's as simple as it is. One, two. And then re-energize is about bringing your stress load down so you can create more energy in your day so you have more motivation because energy and motivation are correlated. The more energy you have, the more motivation you have. We don't know how to find more motivation it's, it just comes to you naturally from wherever, but we do know how to get more energy and that's about re-energizing. So the more you re-energize, the more chance you give yourself to have more motivation, which allows you to move more, which allows you to eat more, which allows you to re-energize, practice more, and you just keep repeating that cycle. So it's a really simple step, three steps, move, eat, re-energize, and you in the middle. So let's have a look at it. I'm going to move this up here. All right. So for body comp, fat loss, all that kind of stuff, you need to live in this little area here. You need to move to what feels reasonable and you need to eat in a way that gets you lean. 
the, that's the hack phase. Generally, that's where most of you guys are living in the gym. We are working in here. If you are overly stressed and fully cooked out, what we need to do is not actually move more. We don't need to add more stress to your life because training in the gym is a stress. It's a good stress, but you are in the middle here. You are a cup. You are a stress cup. And if adding more stress on top of an already overflowed stress cup will just not give you the results you're after. So where you need to live, if you are in a really overstressed state, which we're going to, I'm going to give you guys assessments and stuff to how to figure this all out. So we can help give you re-energized tools in the gym. And that's where this mobility classes and stuff is coming from. And the conditioning classes is all about helping you re-energize in the gym instead of saying, do it at home. So we can give you a prescription. But anyway, to, we'll give you an assessment tool. We'll assess you. Are you stressed overload? We need to work on re-energizing and lowering stress and focusing on quality food. So you're not having inflammatory responses from not such good choices in food. So when you're stressed, when you're overloaded with stress, you need to live in this area to get yourself back to balance. And then you can start moving back towards the move up. And then performance. Performance is all about re-energize. You need to move a lot when you need to do performance, like train for an event or train for a sporting comp, or you are literally a, an athlete. You need to move a lot. And to be able to move a lot, you need to re-energize a lot. So whatever you're doing movement-wise is being saved in your body. The only time it saves is when you recover. And the only way to recover is to re-energize. So for performance, you live in this category. Yes, we want to do all three. But the focus will be is like we either hack in here, hack in here, and hack in here, and then just nudge on the other one. So usually we always focus on one of these three. Stress overload, body comp, fat loss, getting leaner, performance, improving your fitness, et cetera. We focus on one of those three. And that's where we live in the hack zones. And then the other one just goes into maintenance mode till we fix it so that's where the rule of three works for fitness and this is you guys don't need to worry about this we're going to do this all for you based off your check-ins you're going to do soon either tri-weekly fortnightly or weekly and we build your program out at reform with a prescription say come to these sessions do this in these sessions do this at home and you're going to get a prescription every three weeks pretty much on what you need to do to become the best version of you all right let's look at move how we break down move Strength. Strength is king. We want to be strong. The stronger you are, the bigger stress cup you have, the bigger stress cup you have, the more of life's crap you can put into it before you have an overflow or feel overwhelmed and all that kind of stuff. Then we have aerobic fitness. Aerobic fitness is another thing that builds your stress cup. Strength and aerobic fitness are your stress cup. That's how big, the bigger stress cup you have, the more you're able to do an aerobic fitness, which is about hit training. So think of aerobic fitness as walking, very easy running where you can breathe through your nose or you can talk the whole time. That's aerobic fitness. Anaerobic fitness is where it's super intense. You're gassed. You can't talk. You're sitting on the ground afterwards. That's anaerobic fitness. The amount you can do here in anaerobic fitness is based on the amount of strength you have and the amount of aerobic capacity you have. So we train this in the gym so you can do this better. So if you have a bigger stress cup or yeah, a bigger stress cup, you have more capacity to do anaerobic fitness. But if you have a small stress cup, because anaerobic is super intense, super stressful. If your stress cup is small, you don't have much capacity to work here. So we're constantly building this for you because we want everyone to live here and work on their strength and aerobic fitness because it helps them build anaerobic fitness in the long term. So everyone lives here. Strength and aerobic fitness in this little hack zone. Endurance athletes have to live here because they have to get faster over the long distance days run. So they do a lot of long distance running, but they have to get faster at that long distance and learn how to run at a stressed out state. So you, endurance athletes have to live here. And then elite athletes, they live in the anaerobic and strength zone. They've built their capacity already. They've got their capacity there. Usually it goes in cycles. They build their capacity, build their endurance, and then they live in the last little phase of their training is they live in the aerobic zone, the anaerobic zone. And this is very high intensity HIIT training. Think F45, HIIT Republic. They just live here all the time. But what they've forgotten is this part and this part. If you miss these two, you don't, you don't actually get much fitter. So what we're doing here is building a big base of, base of the pyramid. So when you get to this elite level, 
you've got more capacity to do more things. You'll be able, you'll be surprised at the stuff you'll be able to do at this elite level if you do strength and aerobic work and aerobic and anaerobic work and build up to it. All right. So that's our move component. That's how we build out your programs in the gym. Yes. And we do it on our end. You don't have to think about it. We do this all for you. All right. Let's see what nutrition looks like. So the principle number one is quantity. You either got to eat less food to lean out or you got to eat more food to bulk up or eat the same amount of food to maintain. It's as simple as that. We use portion controls with our hands or calorie tracking. There is no secret tricks to nutrition. This is it. Get leaner, eat less than you burn. Get bigger, eat more than you burn. To maintain, eat in balance with your body. We show you how to do that in our nutrition courses. Protein is number two. It's the most important macronutrient we talk about. Because when you're getting leaner, you need protein to retain lean body mass and make you feel full. When you're training hard and performance-based, you need protein to rebuild your muscles so you can come back and train hard again the next day. So protein is number two. We need the protein in there at the right amount and then everything else falls into the carbs and fats category. So that's our metabolic toggle. So quantity is number one. We want calories in versus calories out. That is the number one rule. And then protein, we want to have the right amount of protein, no matter how many calories we got. We need the right amount of protein based on your body weight. And that is set. It never changes. And then we toggle fats and carbs up or down to get the results we want. We turn them up to put on weight or increase performance, or we turn it down to lean out and um, lose body fat. So fat loss here, quantity and protein are the two most important things. So once you get your quantity, like your calories, total calories, and then you get the right amount of protein, everything else from, comes from fats and carbs, but you need to have your calories and your protein sorted first. So that's why I say it lives here. Maintenance lives here. Once you get into maintenance, quantity doesn't matter as much. Generally, we just balance protein, carbs, and fats and just watch your weight and we don't track anything. If your weight increases, then we start tracking again and we go back to fat loss mode. If your weight stays stable, we just live here as long as we need to and just keep playing around with carbs and fats until we get a balance of food that makes you feel really good in yourself. And then performance for you guys who would need to eat for performance. Quantity matters because we need to make sure you're getting enough to fuel your performance. And then we up your carbs and fats depending on the person to make sure you recover from workouts and perform in your training so you see yourself getting better. So that's how we break down our eat component. So quantity, protein, carbs and fats, and then depending on your goal, where you are in your nutrition journey, you'll either be working on fat loss, maintenance, or working on performance. They're the three categories. Maintenance is generally working on um, improved health and everything as well, but I just call it maintenance because you're not worried about fat loss, you're not worried about performance, you're just, just eating at maintenance calories and increasing your quality of food. So that's how we do the rule of three in regards to eating. Re-energize. This is where we get a bit technical here, but pretty much walking is the best re tool you're going to get. Walk for 10 minutes after each meal. Um, when you feel stressed, just go for a walk. It is easily the best thing you can do to re-energize. So we say that is number one. When you need to re-energize, go for a walk. Even if it's outside in the backyard, just to move around for like five minutes. doesn't matter. The sh even a one-minute walk still will re-energize you. A one-minute power walk will wake you up and make you feel better. All right, parasympathetic. That is the rest and digest state. We want to live in balance. So we don't want to just live and rest and digest. We want to stay in there as much as we need to. And then when it's time to work out, we want to live in the sympathetic state, which is the fight or flight response. So when you're training in the gym, you're sympathetic. Your energy's up. You're, rare, you're rare and you're going. Everything's really intense. Before you leave, when I say, well, I want you to wind down and cool down, I want you to get back into a parasympathetic state because that is where recovery is. Sympathetic is high stress, high cortisol. There's no recovery there and there's no improvement in your body generally long-term. But here, you will get improvements in your body. You will recover faster and you will work. Um, you will improve your fitness much quicker. But you've got to have a balance. So rest and digest is in here. We want to walk and do parasympathetic activities like foam rolling, breathing techniques, um, 
relaxed massaging, not deep tissue massaging, just relaxed massaging. Those kind of things like a warm bath, glass of wine and bath, that kind of stuff, that's all rest and digest. Fight or flight is like high intensity breathing to wake yourself up. Um, hot, cold showers, Wim Hof breathing, which some of you know a little bit about, which is about rewinding up your adrenal response. Um, in the gym, you're in sympathetic state all that kind of stuff. There's other things like deep tissue massage, which is really painful. That stuff is in there. Compex systems where they give you shock therapy to your muscles. Um, all that stuff is sympathetic. That is still good sometimes. So you need to make sure we're in the right balance. And the finding the balance is what we're going to talk about in the future with our Morpheus coaching, where Morpheus basically gives you a recovery line and we call it the HRV baseline, which is heart rate variability, which measures your stress load. If you're above your baseline, you're sympathetic. And we just do parasympathetic exercises that bring you back down. If you're below that baseline, you're too parasympathetic. So we need to bring do some sympathetic recovery strategies to get you back to baseline. Because you don't want to be one or the other. You need to be able to, we call it like flexibility in your physiology. You want to be able to do sympathetic and parasympathetic. If you can do both, you're generally going to be a well-conditioned person. You're going to be a very healthy person and you're going to be able to handle more of life shit without it overflowing into other aspects and feeling overwhelmed. So that is the rule of three. That is a global rule of three and how we're going to break things down for you and how we're going to talk about stuff to you in the gym and in these coaching check-ins. So you'll do a coaching check-in based on your move, eat and re-energize. And in and obviously your results. And based on your check-in, we're going to give you a prescription of what to do for the next three weeks. And it's going to be based on do this amount of do this type of movement, do this type of eating plan to it with very general terms. If you're not in the nutrition program, if you if we feel like you need to be in it, we'll be suggesting it. And then the re-energized part is like what you need to do to get yourself back into a recovered state, ready to go for your next training session. So I'm hope you're excited about this because. I've been wanting to build towards this for a while so we can give you guys a one-stop shop to get everything you need. And those classes we're bringing in, the mobility classes are all about getting into parasympathetic state and a sympathetic state, depending on how you feel. And the conditioning classes is to help bring in more conditioning to your life and also help in this re-energized category, which I'm going to talk about in the future. But this is the general, that was the overview of the rule of three Move it, re-energize, and then I broke down the move it, re-energize for you guys in here to show you how we program things for you and how we're going to program into the future. Um, give us some comments. I want to hear what you think about it because that was fun. Anyway, talk to you later.